Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create wavy text using GIMP. I'm using GIMP version 2.10.30 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that guys, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And you can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here is the final composition we'll be creating for today's tutorial. So we're gonna start this off by going to File, New or hit Control N on your keyboard. And I'll go with 1920 by 1080 here for the document size and click OK. And the first thing we'll do is we'll prepare the colors we want to use for this composition. I will be using some built-in color palettes here inside of GIMP. So what I'll do is go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and come down here to Palettes. And now we're going to search for this color palette here, browns and yellows. There's 22 colors in here. I'm going to double click on here. We only need two colors from here. And the main color is going to be the background color. So I'm just gonna click and drag this orange color onto the background and release. For the text color, I'm gonna use this yellow color. So I'll click on the yellow swatch. And now the yellow color here should be on our foreground swatch. Next, I'll grab the text tool over here from the toolbox. And I'm going to change the font here. I know I wanna use impact condensed. So I'll type impact. And then the size I already know is going to be 300 pixels. Anytime you know the settings you want to use for your text, I recommend you set those ahead of time. It's just easier than trying to set it on your canvas. But now what I'll do is come over here and click to create a text layer. And with the caps lock key on, I'll just type wavy text. And now what I'll do is grab the move tool and I'm just going to move this towards the top here and release. And by the way, if I hit Control Shift J, it's going to back out my composition until it fits perfectly here inside the canvas window. So now we have this one line of text. We're going to duplicate this so that we have four lines of text. So to do that, we'll come over here to the Layers panel, make sure we're on the wavy text layer, and we're going to click the duplicate icon until we have four layers of text. Now I'll align the text here to the image. So what I'll do is hit the Q key, or grab the alignment tool from my toolbox. I'll make sure this is set to relative to image. And then I'm going to use the rubber band feature, which just means I'm gonna click and drag my mouse over all of the text and release. So now you'll see that all of these text layers are selected because we've got these little boxes in the corner. Next, what I'll do is come over here and just center align this. So I'll click align center of target. That will center align that on my composition. And then I'm going to distribute the four layers of text and I'll do that under the distribute tab here or the distribute heading. And I'll come over here and click distribute targets evenly in the vertical. So now I'm just gonna create some outlines from two of the text layers here just to make the composition look a bit more dynamic. So what I'll do is come over here and click on the bottom text layer and you'll see it's going to outline that text layer here. And first I'll come over here, create a new layer and name it text outline and fill it with transparency and click OK. Now I'm going to alt click on that text layer and that's going to create a selection from the text. If alt click doesn't work for you, just click on that layer and go to layer, transparency, alpha to selection. And then if you do do that method for creating a selection, just make sure you come back and click on the text outline layer to make that the active layer. So with our text selected, now I'll come over to the Paths tab, and I'm going to click the Selection to Path option here, and that's going to convert our selection to a path. So now I'll hit Control shift a to deselect that, and now I'll come over here, click the Paint Along the Path option there, and that's just gonna create a stroke along the shape of our text. So I'll set the line width to five. The line style is just gonna be set up here to line and then it's gonna use whatever our foreground color is over here, which is this yellow color. And now I'll come over here and hit stroke, and that'll stroke the text. So we'll come back to the layers panel and hide the original text layer. So now we have a cool stroke text there. We'll do the same here to this layer. So every other one will be a stroked text layer. So I'll come over here once again, click to create a new layer. We'll go with the text outline heading there again and then fill this with transparency. 
click OK. Alt click on this. So the text outline layer is still the active layer. We'll come over to the paths tab. We're going to convert the selection to a path. Control shift A to deselect the text. And then once again, we're going to paint along the path, which will stroke the text. We'll go with the same exact settings and click stroke. So we'll come back to the layers panel and just hide that second layer, the text layer. So now every other one is going to have a different design. All right, once we've done this step, the next step is we want to put all of these layers onto one single visible layer. That way it'll be easier to affect all the layers when we add a filter to this. So what I'll do is come over here and hide the background and then I'll go to layer, new from visible. So now we have a visible layer with all of our text elements on there. I'll shift click on the show hide icon, which will hide all the other layers. And then I'm going to unhide the background layer. So now all we have is the visible layer with all the text on it and then the background layer, everything else is hidden. So now what I'll do is I'll go to filters, distorts, whirl and pinch. So this is going to give us that cool wavy text effect or this distorted text effect here. So the first slider here is the whirl slider and that's basically going to swirl the text and depending on whether this is positive or negative, it's going to swirl in either a counterclockwise or a clockwise direction. So you'll see here when I go into the negative, it's going to swirl it the opposite way. Pinch is going to basically squish this inwards towards the center or it's going to blow it out from the center. And then radius is going to determine how far out the design is going to go. So basically if we increase the radius, it allows the design or it allows the effect to sort of spill out towards the outer parts of the layer here. Basically what this slider ends up doing is it ends up decreasing or increasing the intensity of the effect. So a larger radius number will be a more intense effect. And if we set it to zero, there's going to be no effect. So let's hit reset and play around with these settings here. So let's go with something like that. The clipping option is going to determine what happens if pixels spill outside the layer. So in this case, adjust means the layer will grow to accommodate those pixels. Otherwise, if you set it to clip, it'll just cut those pixels off that spill outside the boundary. In this case, that's not happening. Then you also have blending options. So this is a little different than the blending options for different filters in GIMP. In this case, it's going to blend the affected layer with the original layer. So for example, let me just sort of uh, click on here and cycle through these with my mouse wheel. So you can see the affected layer is basically blending with the original layer and that's creating some interesting effects here. So definitely play around with that. I'm going to go back to replace. And then opacity is also different in that it's going to overlay the affected layer on top of the original layer. So you get this really cool effect here where you have a semi-transparent affected layer on top of the original layer. So that's another cool thing you can do with this. I'm going to turn this back up to 100 though. And here is a before, here's an after, and I'll click OK. And there we have some really cool wavy or distorted text in GIMP. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.